I'm too expensive. <laughs> right on. Um, hey, folks, so just to let you know, the stage door is right there, you know. Okay, they're going to be coming out that way. Yeah, so you're going to have to finesse all that. Okay, so welcome to the Jazz and Heritage Center. Who's never been here before? All right, goodly number, but most of you have been here, so all right, well, welcome. Welcome new friends, welcome returning friends. Thank you so much for being here. So as you know, this is the Jazz and Heritage Center. We are the Jazz and Heritage Foundation. We're the nonprofit organization that owns the Jazz Fest. That's right, we own the Jazz Fest. And our job is not to produce the festival. That is done by the great folks at Festival Productions Incorporated, Quint Davis's company. Our job is to use the money from Jazz Fest for all of the free programs that we do all year long. And as you know, we're active in education, economic development, cultural enrichment. This building actually is the first ever permanent home of our free music program, the Heritage School of Music, right in this building right here. That's right, thank you. Okay. That's right, we, we now, when, when we restarted the Heritage School after Katrina, we had about 35 students a week come in to take classes with us at Dillard University. When we opened this building in January 2015, the program increased to 100 students a week. And then a year later, when we added a beginner's program in which we give out instruments to the kids who are now as young as age eight and many of whom have never had the opportunity to study music at all, the program doubled again to 200. So now that's how many kids we have in the program. Thank you. These are your Jazz Fest dollars at work, folks. This is the Jazz Fest money that we invest right back into the community to support this culture of ours. Uh, so we have our Heritage School of Music. We have a large grants program called Community Partnership Grants. We give out close to a million dollars a year in funding. Uh, this year we had, I think, 325 applicants, of whom about 290 got money. So that's a better than 85% chance of getting funded from us if you apply. Uh, so thank you, you can apply for that. You can apply. No, you can't apply, because you're on the board. You can't apply, but you all can apply. So our applications um, for the grants program for in-school music programs, programs that happen at schools, uh, those applications will come out February 1st, and the rest of the applications for the other three categories come out in March. So be on the lookout for that. Um, we do a lot of economic development program. We do a lot of business workshops for people in the arts. In fact, right here in this room, next Wednesday, the 19th, we have the last of our Sync Up Music Business Workshops of the year, and that one's on the topic of financial literacy for musicians. So if you know any musicians that need to know how to count to 15 to pay their managers or something like that. Anyway, so we'll have a free workshop here. That's Wednesday at 5.30. Uh, as with almost all of our programming, that workshop will be webcast live by our good friends at radio station WWOZ, which of course is your Jazz and Heritage station. <laughs> jazz and Heritage uh, Radio, the Jazz and Heritage Foundation owns the broadcast license at WWOZ, so that is part of our family of activities. Um, let's see what else. We don't have any more festivals coming up this year, I don't think. No, we've done a lot of festivals this year. We had, a couple of weeks ago in November, we had our Treme Gumbo Festival. I think that was the 11th annual. Anybody make it out to that? Yeah, yeah this was a good one this year. We had great weather. Um, the Crescent City Blues and Barbecue Festival was in October. We did that one in Lafayette Square. Another great weather year. Um, nothing else on the festival front coming up until March. Our Congo Square Rhythms Festival. I think that's the 12th annual on that one, I forget. Um, which also includes our Plascott Brass Competition, which is a contest for middle school and high school brass bands. We give out $50,000 worth of instruments to all the schools that participate. No, you're not gonna pluck that? Thank you. Your Jazz Fest dollars at work, folks. I, I could be here all night, no, uh, <laughs> but I won't be. Uh, I promise. Um, but we do a lot of concerts in this room as well. Normally we do about one maybe two free concerts a month, but this has been a really busy month. We've actually had three concerts this month. Uh, two weeks ago, we had the piano player, Courtney Bryan. Yeah, she was amazing. Last week, we had an incredible show with Devel Crawford. And then we have, who's playing tonight? Oh, right, yeah, so we have a really special show tonight. Are y'all ready to hear a show? All right, so. All right, Charlie, start the webcast. Um, so some of you may have heard of our featured performer tonight. 
He's a young up-and-coming musician who I'm told has a bright future in jazz if he just sticks with it. Uh, Ellis Marsalis, of course, is an icon of New Orleans. He is a graduate of Dillard University, he is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps, and he is known as one of the heroes and the patriarchs, really, of modern jazz in New Orleans. Uh, back in the 1950s with compatriots like Jermaine Basil and Roger Dickerson and so many others, they were really at the forefront of bringing the burgeoning sound of bebop that was sweeping the world to New Orleans, which was primarily known for trad music, and of course, they really blazed a trail for so many other people who have followed in their footsteps. He, of course, is legendary as an educator, probably first and foremost, uh, having helped to found the jazz department at the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, having been on the faculty for many years at the University of New Orleans and Virginia Commonwealth University. He's also um, really a trailblazer in the music business. Um, Let's see, with Harold, the late Harold Baptiste, he was one of the original founders of AFO, All For One Records, which was the very first black-owned independent label in New Orleans, and back in the 50s and 60s, they really blazed a trail for, uh, you know, uh, owning their own record label, which is pretty damn cool. And had big hit records on top of it, so they did a lot of great stuff. So, so he's uh, an educator, a business leader, and of course, as some of you may have heard, he actually has a couple of kids. <laughs> That's right, he and his uh, beloved uh, late wife Dolores had six sons, of whom four are exceedingly well known as jazz musicians, and he can tell you all about that if he likes. Um, but uh, he's retired from teaching, of course, but he is more busy than ever. He is in demand as a recording artist with some 20 albums to his credit. And uh, he is just touring all over the world as much as he can. And he plays in New Orleans just about every week at Snug Harbor. But we managed to steal him on this night. So we have for you, very specially, the Ellis Marsalis Quintet. So let's bring them out on the drums, Gerald Watkins. At the bass, Mr. Jason Stewart. <laughs> On the trumpet, Mr. Andrew Baham. <laughs> At the saxophone, not coincidentally, the leader of our own Heritage School of Music, the amazing Derek Doge. And here he is, the man of the hour. Please welcome Ellis Marsalis.
goodness, Charlie Brown. <laughs>
Thank you. 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 Thank you.